Chief Mosshood Kasamawo Olawale Abiola, GCFR, the 24th of August 1937 to the 7th of July 1998, was a Nigerian Yoruba businessman, publisher, politician, and aristocrat of the Yoruba EGBA clan. He was the AARE Ona Kankafo of the Yoruba land. Mko Abiola ran for the presidency in 1993, for which the election results were annulled by the preceding military president Ibrahim Babangida because of allegations that they were corrupt and unfair. Abiola was awarded the GCFR posthumously on 6 June 2018 by President Muhammadu Buhari and Nigeria's Democracy Day was changed to June 12. Abiola was a personal friend of Babangida and he is believed to have supported Babangida's coming to power. Abiola's support in the June 1993 presidential election cut across geo political zones and religious divisions among a few politicians to accomplish such a spread during his time. By the time of his death, he had become an unexpected symbol of democracy. <laughs> Early life Mko Abiola was born in Abiokuta, Ogun State to the family of Salawu and Suliat Waraula Abiola. His father was a produce trader who primarily traded cocoa and his mom traded in kola nuts. His name, Kasamawo, means, Let us wait and see. Moshood Abiola was his father's 23rd child but the first of his father's children to survive infancy, hence the name Kasamawo. It was not until he was 15 years old that he was properly named Moshood, by his parents. As a young boy, he assisted his father in the cocoa trade, but by the end of 1946, his father's business venture was failing precipitated by the destruction of a cocoa consignment declared by a produce inspector to be of poor quality grade and unworthy for export and to be destroyed immediately. Abiola attended African Central School, Abiokuta for his primary education. At the age of nine he started his first business selling firewood gathered in the forest at dawn before school, to support his father and siblings. Abiola founded a band at the age of 15 and would perform at various ceremonies in exchange for food. Abiola was eventually able to require payment for his performances, and used the money to support his family and his secondary education at the Baptist Boys High School Abiokuta. Abiola was the editor of the school magazine The Trumpeter, Olushigan Abasanjo was deputy editor. At the age of 19 he joined the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons ostensibly because of its stronger pan-Nigerian origin compared with the Obafemi Awolowo-led action group. In 1960, he obtained a government scholarship to study at University of Glasgow where he later earned a degree in accountancy and qualified as a chartered accountant. Topic: Business career. In 1956, Moshood Abiola started his professional life as a bank clerk with Barclays Bank in Ibadan, southwest Nigeria. After two years, he joined the Western Region Finance Corporation as an executive accounts officer. Before leaving for Glasgow, Scotland, to pursue his higher education. From Glasgow University he received a first-class degree in accountancy, and he also gained a distinction from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Scotland. On his return to Nigeria, Abiola worked as a senior accountant at the University of Lagos Teaching Hospital, then went on to U.S. firm Pfizer, before joining the ITT Corporation, where he later rose to the position of Vice President, Africa and Middle East. 
Abiola spent a lot of his time, and made most of his money, in the United States, while retaining the post of chairman of the corporation's Nigerian subsidiary. ITT While Abiola worked at the Nigerian subsidiary of Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, his desire was to own some equity in the firm but the options available to him was not appealing. He then applied to a job listing seeking a trained accountant. It was during the interview that he found out the firm was ITT Corporation. Abiola was employed by the firm and one of his immediate responsibilities was to clear the backlog of debt owned the firm by the military. An office meeting with the Army's Inspector of Signals, Murtala Muhammad to seek a resolution of the debts resulted in verbal argument heard by the Chief of Army Staff Hassan Usman Katsina. The intervention of Katsina ended up being favorable to Abiola as he was given a check to cover the debt. Abiola used his determination to clear the debts as a bargaining tool for more role in the company. Initially, he was able to remove the expatriate manager but was unable to get a requested 50% equity in the Nigerian arm of ITT. Abiola subsequently established Radio Communications RCN as a side business. New employees were trained in marketing of telecoms equipment, and Abiola targeted the military who were replacing Civil War era equipment as business clients. His marketing strategy proposed training of military personnel in the use of equipment so as to reduce reliance on outside vendors for maintenance. This strategy gained favor in a security conscious armed forces. Abiola soon received a contract to supply hardware to the military that got the attention of ITT and he was offered 49% equity ownership of its Nigerian arm. RCN went on to develop a static communications network for the Armed Forces Signal Unit and Nigeria's domestic satellite communications. In 1975, ITT and Partners secured a major supply to supply automatic telephone exchanges in a number of locations within the country. Other ventures In addition to his duties throughout the Middle East and Africa, Abiola invested heavily in Nigeria and West Africa. He set up Abiola Farms, Abiola Bookshops, Radio Communications Nigeria, Wonder Bakeries, Concord Press, Concord Airlines, Summit Oil International Limited, Africa Ocean Lines, Habib Bank, Deca WA Limited, and Abiola Football Club. He was also chairman of the G15 Business Council, president of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, patron of the Kwame Nkrumah Foundation, patron of the Webb Dubois Foundation, trustee of the Martin Luther King Foundation, and director of the International Press Institute. In 1983, he teamed up with Shehu Musa Yaradua, Bamanga Takor, and Raymond Depeci to establish Africa Ocean Lines. The firm began operations in 1984 using chartered vessels before acquiring two cargo ships in 1986 with a capacity for 958 TEUs. The shipping firm's route linked the major shipping ports along the West African coast with United Kingdom and Northern Europe. Involvement in politics Abiola's involvement in politics started early on in life when he joined the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroons at age 19. In 1979, the military government kept its word and handed over power to the civilian. 
As Abiola was already involved in politics, he joined the ruling National Party of Nigeria in 1980 and was elected the state chairman of his party. Re-election was done in 1983 and everything looked promising since the re-elected president was from Abiola's party and based on the true transition to power in 1979, Abiola was eligible to go for the post of presidential candidate after the tenure of the re-elected president. However, his hope to become the president was shortly dashed away for the first time in 1983 when a military coup d'état swept away the re-elected president of his party and ended civilian rule in the country. Abiola was a member of Ansar Uddin organization in Nigeria. In the 1980s, through his National Concord newspaper Abiola supported Islamic causes including introduction of a Sharia Court of Appeal in southwestern Nigeria and Nigeria's entry to the Organization of Islamic Countries. The support given the latter received less favorable response from some readers of the National Concord. Notwithstanding, he was actively involved in the foundation and activities of the National Sharia Committee. In 1984, he was given a title of Baba Adini of Yorubaland by a committee of Muslim clerics. His support of Islam in southern Nigeria earned him some recognition in the northern region of the country. In his hometown of Abiokuda, Abiola built a Quran training center which was named after his mother Zulihat Abiola. After a decade of military rule, General Ibrahim Babangida came under pressure to return democratic rule to Nigeria. After an aborted initial primary, Abiola stood for the presidential nomination of the Social Democratic Party (SDP) and beat Ambassador Baba Gana Kingaib and Alhaji Atiku Abubakar to secure the presidential nomination of the SDP ahead of the 12th of June 1993 presidential elections. Abiola had managed to work his way out of poverty through hard work. He established Abiola bookshops to provide affordable, locally produced textbooks in the 1980s when imported textbooks became out of the reach of ordinary Nigerians as the Naira was devalued. He also made available daily necessities such as rice and soap at affordable prices in the market. Presidential election Topic Primaries and Campaign Abiola announced his candidacy for president in February 1993. This was after a previous round of presidential primaries had been cancelled by military president Babangida. His party of choice was SDP, though he was an outsider who was new to the partisan politics within the party that was dominated by two major factions. Both SDP and its opposition, NRC held presidential primaries in March 1993. SDP's primaries was held in Yosh and was largely a three contest between Abiola, Kingaib and Atiku even though there were more aspirants. Abiola was heavily supported by the People's Solidarity Faction within SDP while Atiku was supported by PF Faction led by Yaradua and Kingaib was supported by a loose coalition of party members. During the first ballot, Abiola was able to score a slim majority vote of 3,617 to Kingaib's 3,225. A second round was contested two days later and Abiola again emerged victorious with a slim margin and he became the party's presidential candidate for the June 12 election. Abiola's political message was an optimistic future for Nigeria with slogans such as, Farewell to poverty, quote, At last, our rays of hope, and the 
burden of schooling. His economic policy included negotiations with foreign creditors and better management of the country's international debts, in addition, increased cooperation with the foreign community while presenting himself as someone the international community can trust. Election For the 12 June 1993 presidential elections, Abiola's running mate was his primary opponent Baba Gana Kingaib. He defeated his rival, Bashir Tofa of the National Republican Convention. The election was declared Nigeria's freest and fairest presidential election by national and international observers, with Abiola even winning in his northern opponent's home state of Kano. Abiola won at the national capital, Abuja, the military polling stations, and over two-thirds of Nigerian states. Men of northern descent had largely dominated Nigeria's political landscape since independence. Mashud Abiola, a southern Muslim, was able to secure a national mandate freely and fairly, unprecedented in Nigeria's history. However, the election was annulled by Ibrahim Babangida, causing a political crisis which led to General Sani Abaka seizing power later that year. During preparations for the 2011 Nigerian presidential elections there were calls from several quarters to remember Mko Abiola 12. Unofficial result Topic: Imprisonment In 1994 Mashud Abiola declared himself the lawful president of Nigeria in the Epitato area of Lagos Island, an area mainly populated by Yoruba Lagos indigenes. He had recently returned from a trip to win the support of the international community for his mandate. After declaring himself president he was declared wanted and was accused of treason and arrested on the orders of military president General Sani Abaka, who sent 200 police vehicles to bring him into custody. Mko Abiola has been referred to as Nigeria's greatest statesman. His second wife Alhaja Kadarat Abiola was assassinated in Lagos in 1996 after declaring public support for her husband. Mashud Abiola was detained for four years, largely in solitary confinement with a Bible, Quran, and 14 guards as companions. During that time, Pope John Paul II, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and human rights activists from all over the world lobbied the Nigerian government for his release. The sole condition attached to the release of Chief Abiola was that he renounce his mandate, something that he refused to do, although the military government offered to compensate him and refund his extensive election expenses. For this reason Chief Abiola became extremely troubled when Kofi Annan and Emeka Eniaoku reported to the world that he had agreed to renounce his mandate after they met with him to tell him that the world would not recognize a five-year-old election. <laughs> Personal life Mashud Abiola married many wives, notable among them are Samibiat Atinuk Shoaga in 1960, Kudarat Olayinka Adaimi in 1973, Adabisi Olawanmi Ocean in 1974, Doyansola Doyen Abiola Aboba in 1981, Madupe Onitiri Abiola and Remy Abiola. He fathered many children. Death 
Abiola died in suspicious circumstances shortly after the death of General Abaca, on the day that he was due to be released, 7 July 1998. While the official autopsy stated that Abiola died of natural causes, Abaca's chief security officer, Al Mustafa has alleged that Mashud Abiola was in fact beaten to death. Al Mustafa, who was detained by the Nigerian government, but later released, claims to have video and audio tapes showing how Abiola was beaten to death. The final autopsy report, which was produced by a group of international coroners, has never been publicly released. Regardless of the exact circumstances of his death, it is clear that Chief Abiola received insufficient medical attention for his existing health conditions. As recounted at the time in a BBC interview with Special Envoy Thomas R. Pickering, an American delegation which included Susan Rice visited Abiola. During their meeting with him, Abiola fell ill, with what was presumed to be a heart attack which caused his death. A clause in Abiola's will required that his heirs prove that he was their father. Over 70 people were able to show that Abiola was their father using DNA tests. Seven children were descended from his second wife, Alhaja Qadarat Abiola. Topic Remembrance of MKO Abiola Chief MKO Abiola's memory is celebrated in Nigeria and internationally. The 12th of June remains a public holiday in Nigeria beginning June 12, 2019. It will be celebrated as Democracy Day, replacing May 29. Remembrance events are arranged across Nigeria. MKO Abiola Stadium and Mashud Abiola Polytechnic were named in his honor, and there were calls for posthumous presidential recognition. A statue, MKO Abiola statue was erected in his honor. MKO Abiola was criticized by political activists and detractors. Controversy was caused by a song by Nigerian musician, Fela Kuti, a charismatic multi-instrumentalist musician, composer and human rights activist, famed for being the pioneer of Afrobeat music and a controversial figure due to his unusual lifestyle and apparent drug use. It is believed that Kuti had entered into an acrimonious dispute relating to a contract with MKO Abiola's record label. He used the abbreviation of International Telephone and Telegraph in a song criticizing big multinational corporations. The song, ITT, accuses such companies of draining Africa's resources and says they start to steal money like Abasanjo and Abiola. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and honors Mashud Abiola was twice voted International Businessman of the Year, and received numerous honorary doctorates from universities all over the world. In 1987 he was bestowed with the Golden Key to the City of Washington, D.C., and he was bestowed with awards from the NAACP and the King Center in the USA, as well as the International Committee on Education for Teaching in Paris, among many others. In Nigeria, the Aloyi Abiola was made the Aare Ona Kakanfo of Yorubaland, the highest chieftaincy title available to commoners amongst the Yoruba. At the point when he was elevated, the title had only been conferred by the tribe 13 times in its long history. This in effect rendered Abiola the ceremonial war viceroy of all of his tribe's people. 
According to the folklore of the tribe as recounted by the Yoruba elders, the Aare Ona Kakanfo is expected to die a warrior in the defense of his nation to prove himself in the eyes of both the divine and the mortal as having been worthy of his title. He was awarded the third highest national honor, the commander of the Federal Republic posthumously in 1998. He was also awarded the highest national honor, the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic posthumously in 2018 with the date of the annulled election made Nigeria's Democracy Day. Philanthropy <inaudible> 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 Mosshood Abiola sprang to national and international prominence as a result of his philanthropic activities. The Congressional Black Caucus of the United States of America issued the following tribute to Mosshood Abiola. Because of this man, there is both cause for hope and certainty that the agony and protests of those who suffer injustice shall give way to peace and human dignity. The children of the world shall know the great work of this extraordinary leader and his fervent mission to right wrong, to do justice, and to serve mankind. The enemies which imperil the future of generations to come, poverty, ignorance, disease, hunger, and racism have each seen effects of the valiant work of Chief Abiola. Through him and others like him, never again will freedom rest in the domain of the few. We, the members of the Congressional Black Caucus salute him this day as a hero in the global pursuit to preserve the history and the legacy of the African diaspora. From 1972 until his death Mosshood Abiola had been conferred with 197 traditional titles by 68 different communities in Nigeria, in response to his having provided financial assistance in the construction of 63 secondary schools, 121 mosques and churches, 41 libraries, 21 water projects in 24 states of Nigeria, and he was grand and patron to 149 societies or associations in Nigeria. In addition to his work in Nigeria, Mosshood Abiola supported the Southern African liberation movements from the 1970s, and he sponsored the campaign to win reparations for slavery and colonialism in Africa and the diaspora. He personally communicated with every African head of state, and every head of state in the black diaspora to ensure that Africans would speak with one voice on the issues. <laughs> 